are back, we are back, and we are live. And for the first time in close to four years, since August of 2020, during the pandemic, for the first time, we have a universal champion that is not Roman Reigns. Because yes, Cody Rhodes has finished the story. Cody Rhodes has done what no other member of the iconic Rhodes family has done, and that is win a world championship in WWE. This is the WrestleMania Night 2, WrestleMania Sunday post show. You can see the highlights on the left-hand side of the screen there as we go through um, an eventful evening, a newsworthy evening, a historic evening, and really... I think this is an evening that can best be described as Triple H living up to his word. He said that this was going to be the beginning of a new era for WWE. Now, whatever you want to call this era, some have described it as the, the TKO era. Some have called it the Renaissance era. Some have called it the Paul Levesque era. Whatever era you want to call it, it is just that. It's the beginning of a new era in WWE. That's exactly what it is because... We have new champions galore. We have two new world champions. We have a new women's champion. We have a new uh, intercontinental champion. We've got new tag team champions. We've got new champions all over the place, certainly. And what we've got is, I said, a new era. It felt like sometimes at the end of these WrestleMania um, events, you feel like things have been bookended. And this chapter is closed and we're into... A new chapter. We're into a new story. For all of the talk about finishing the story, we are now on to a new story. And that story is with Cody Rhodes as the face of the company, is with uh, Triple H leading the charge. And um, it's fascinating to see what happens next. I mean, if we're going to talk about sort of broad strokes uh, of the show, um, night two was, I mean, far superior, I think, to night one. Night one was very much a couple of match kind of show, realistically, I thought. I thought Night One was a show that really heavily f was focusing on the main event, a good opener and a good Intercontinental Championship match. But Night One, the crowd was very quiet, cold, because of the weather and because of the matches. And it just was, it was sort of so-so. Whereas this evening, I think you look through the entire card. There were six matches tonight. And I think a testament to those who performed, to those who booked and uh, and what have you, I think they all totally delivered. Absolutely, totally, totally, totally delivered. No doubt about it. Every single match delivered, I think, what you were looking for from it. Every single match gave you WrestleMania moments. Every single match was in its own way memorable and uh, the crowd was into it. And it was just a really fantastic fantastic uh wrestlemania sunday so i think huge credit to wwe huge credit to paul levesque for putting the show on and um yeah now i'm absolutely fascinated to see what happens as we go into this new era as far as cody rhodes winning i mentioned it last night that i felt that he had to win this evening there was no way he was going to lose there was, there was just, there was no way he was going to lose. Let, let's face it, yeah. If Cody Rhodes had lost tonight, he would be done as a top main event level babyface. And the reason I say that is the guy would have lost three consecutive WrestleMania main event matches. He lost last year against Roman Reigns. He lost last night. So, I mean, don't even mistake that. If you think about what's being planned for the future, you know, with, uh, with 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 The Rock. The Rock pinned Cody Rhodes last night. If you don't think that's going to be revisited, you got to get your head checked. Because at some point in the future, we are getting The Rock versus Cody Rhodes for the Undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Now, I suppose you could say, surprisingly, we didn't get The Rock turning on Roman Reigns or Roman Reigns turning on The Rock. But actually, in retrospect, I don't think that was the night for it. I don't think it was the night for that term. Because this, this night was all about Cody Rhodes. This night was all about Cody Rhodes finishing his story. This night was all about Cody Rhodes getting the spotlight and being crowned, anointed as the face of WWE. He's just signed a new long-term contract with the company. And John Cena told him after WrestleMania last year, just be the champion without the championship. And he's been that for the last year. And it's, it's very apparent now, isn't it? Very, very, very apparent now that 
he's the guy in WWE. You know, Roman Reigns is still going to be a top star uh, part time. He's still going to be a, a top star, no doubt. But as far as the face, the premier top baby face of the company, Cody Rhodes was it anyway. But this was the crowning moment in the same way that John Cena had his crowning moments at WrestleManias, um, in the same way that Roman Reigns had his crowning moments at WrestleManias as the top babyface. Cody Rhodes is the top babyface. He is the guy in WWE right now. And I suppose the challenge and what's going to be interesting with Rhodes as the top champion is... How long does he hold this championship for? It's not is it gonna it's not gonna be like Roman Reigns, he's not gonna hold it for close to four years. And Stone Cold Steve Austin is maybe one of the premier examples of all of this, is that sometimes the money's in the chase as opposed to fending people off. So is Cody going to be a, a babyface champion that holds it for a long time? Or is he gonna be, you know, akin to a Hulk Hogan or John Cena? Or is he going to be akin to a Stone Cold Steve Austin where it's I've won it, now I, I drop it and then we chase it again? Is is that what we're going to be doing? So it was, uh, that's really, I think, fascinating too. The main event was how you thought it was going to be um, with lots of surprises. I think a lot of people were expecting Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, some parts of it, I suppose, didn't make sense. Like, to me, what would have made sense would have been, obviously, uh, Jimmy Uso comes out, Jey Uso comes out, fights him off, spears him off the stage. That makes sense. Tick. Solo Sokoa comes out. That brings out John Cena. That makes sense. Of course, seeing the last rest of the crown jewel against Solo Sokoa. So that makes sense. Tick. Out comes The Rock to confront John Cena. Their history. Tick. That makes sense. Then when he takes out Cena, the next logical step would have been a Stone Cold Steve Austin. Glass breaks. Out comes Steve Austin. Big stunner on The Rock. Flops around all over the ring. Like that makes the most sense to me. Um, I don't know if it was logistics. You know, it was Steve Austin. He didn't want to do it. I, I don't know. Um, so they bring out The Undertaker, and The Undertaker gives The Rock a choke slam, and they disappear. Okay, <laughs> that's what they decided to do. But ultimately, the moment was three crossroads. Finally, he manages to hit the final three crossroads, and uh, he gets the one, two, three on Roman Reigns and becomes the Universal Champion. So interesting to see where we go next of the, uh, the Triple H era. Um, let's see what people are saying in the chat about this as well. Just Kevin says, so Owen, what do you want to talk about? Um... Uh, Copycat says the story sucks. Wow. Um, uh, Zama says, brilliant main event. Can't wait until next Friday when I go to see Raw at the O2 Arena, but no announcement for 41. Uh, yeah, interesting that there wasn't an announcement for the location of WrestleMania 41. Maybe it would just be a case of Raw tomorrow night. I mean, I do think the, the mindset with the, the, the post-WrestleMania Raw has changed with TKO because it's the biggest Raw of the year. It's the night after WrestleMania. And it's, you know, it's, it's mythical, isn't it? But WWE in recent years has really done a bad job with the post-Raw, um, the post-Mania Raw. And I think WWE is very keen to do big angles, big moments on that show tomorrow. So that's where I think you might get something with Rock and um, Roman tomorrow. I think you might get an announcement tomorrow. Like, I, I do think there's the, the way they present it, I think, is going to be very different with the Raw after Mania. Um, what else are people saying here at the moment here as well? Um... Uh, Copycat says Reigns is sick, I think. No, Roman Reigns is is not sick. He clarified this in his um, last night in the post-show press conference. Um, he still technically has leukemia. He's in remission. Um, he takes oral chemotherapy every day for the rest of his life, but he's he's fine. If he if he was sick, there's, he would not be wrestling. He would not be cleared to wrestle this this evening. So he's, he's, he's fine. Um, Roman's going to be off t television for a while. He might be on Raw tomorrow, but apart from that, or maybe on SmackDown on Friday, but apart from that, he'll be on hiatus, not because he's sick, not because he's injured, but that's because his contract is like that. He has limited dates. Roman Reigns, if he had retained tonight, would have been off television for a while, like last year. Remember when Roman Reigns, um, you know, retained and then disappeared until, what was it, Night of Champions? Like that, that's the rain schedule. So rains will disappear. Maybe they'll do it for a bit longer now. Again, depending on the angle they do on Raw tomorrow, which I think could be actually Rock turning on Roman and the Roman disappearing. And then maybe they build something at, at SummerSlam or later on. Um, yeah, but uh, Roman, in terms of his health, he's uh, he is he's fine as well. Uh, we've got nearly 200 people watching, by the way, guys, which is fantastic. I know it's late or early, depending on where you are in the world. Um, so if you haven't already, click that like button. Uh, we're getting into 200 people watching, which is fantastic. Um, we're at just about 50 likes at the moment. So if you haven't already, click that like button. Be sure to subscribe whilst you're at it too. You can see this uh, live counter here. This is a live number. Um, let's see if we can get to... 
You never know, maybe we get to 17,300. Anything's possible. Anything certainly is possible. So yes, if you haven't already, click the like button, be sure to subscribe. We do um, daily news videos, two at least a day, covering all things WWE, AW, TNA Wrestling, New Japan, anything in the world of pro wrestling, we cover it. Um, Sus Commentary says, the, ga the game era. Um, well, actually, that's an interesting point. Let me put you over here. Um, what would you just what would you call this era that's been something that they've been trying to figure out and find isn't it they've been trying to figure out what to call it is it the renaissance era is it the levec era is it the game era is it something out is it the tko era like what what would you call it what would you call that um this era and because it, it very it does feel very defined doesn't it which i think they've tried to do this in the past i remember a couple of years ago they tried to do the reality era and what have you and you i don't think you're allowed that's the thing i don't think you're allowed to just to be like this is defined this is an era you, it, it organically happens and we're definitely in a new spot aren't we at the moment we're definitely into something different something new what would you call it though i'm not sure I'm not sure what you would call it. Um, yeah. You can uh, you can let me know in the chat, and obviously you just sit right there. If you do super chats or if you're new subscribers or whatever, you, you, stuff pops up, which is a lot of fun. And I always forget, and every time it pops up, it makes me jump um, as well. Let's get into the matches because, like I say, I think as a show, I thought it was really well done by WWE. I think every match delivered. I think night two was far superior to night one. I thought night one struggled. Uh, at different points but this evening the crowd was loud they were lively and everything really um really hit home really well so we kicked off the show with the world heavyweight championship and my goodness me did we get something interesting in this one of course it was seth rollins defending the world heavyweight championship against drew mcintyre with cm punk on commentary and we have or had not one but two title changes in this bout. Two title changes because Drew McIntyre did something that he's not been able to do his entire WWE career. And that is win a world championship in front of live fans. Yes, Drew McIntyre is a two-time WWE champion. But he won his first WWE championship in the main event of WrestleMania, defeating Brock Lesnar. But it was at the WWE Performance Center in front of zero fans. He won it a second time on an episode of Raw in 2020. But again in front of zero fans. Then he dropped it at Elimination Chamber in 2021. Never won a WWE Championship since. He did it today. He won the World Heavyweight Championship, but it didn't last very long, unfortunately, for the Scottish Warrior. Because what happened after hitting what must be described as, I think, 10 million Claymores on Seth Rollins, finally gets the W, gets the win, but he couldn't help himself. He could not help himself, good old Drew, because he has the championship. He goes over to CM Punk and he's rubbing it in his face. He's rubbing it in his face. This should have been you, but it's me. I want you to remember this. I want to rub this in your face. And CM Punk's sitting there. He's furious. He stands up. Drew McIntyre gives the crotch top and CM Punk goes, you know what? Screw this. And he pulls. He pulls Drew McIntyre down on the announce table. He takes his brace off his arm for his torn tricep. He smashes, smashes uh, Drew McIntyre over the head with his brace. And then what does that lead to? It leads to Damian Priest. Damian Priest, member of the Judgment Day, senior money in the bank, which I think pretty, pretty much everyone had kind of forgotten about, holding it, holding the money in the bank briefcase, comes out, um, picks up, Drew McIntyre into the ring, south of heaven, cover, one, two, three, and we have a brand new world heavyweight champion, yes, the brand new world heavyweight champion is not Drew McIntyre, it's the Judgment Day's Damian Priest, for the second time ever in WrestleMania history, someone has cashed in their money in the bank briefcase and left with a title, a world title, ironically enough, the first person to do it was Seth Rollins back at WrestleMania 31 in 2015. This time it's Damian Priest. And I thought this match really, really delivered. I think what is interesting about this, I think it leads to more questions about the future of Drew McIntyre, doesn't it? We know that Drew McIntyre, his contract is up very soon. I mean, when we're, we're talking the next month or so, his contract is up after WrestleMania. And a lot of people had thought and maybe assumed, well, if um, you wouldn't put a title on someone with their contract expiring, that you wouldn't do that. So when he won the championship, you go, 
he's sticking around. And no, I think the prevailing belief is that he is going to be sticking around. But when he he's uh, when he when he when he wins the championship, it's like right, he's going to be sticking around. Sign a new contract, boom, that's going to happen. Now, once again, you go Ooh, maybe not. But I think I think this I think it was the perfect way to do it. I think this is the perfect way to tell this story because when he he's holding the championship there and he's looking at Rollins and Rollins I think he even said to him you deserve this and he does he absolutely does deserve it and you go right this is this is his moment this is his moment he's finally done it and it's like the whole part of the heel turn for Drew McIntyre his whole sort of descent into being a bad guy and going into madness was getting what he perceived to be screwed over. He got screwed over by the bloodline. He got screwed over by Jey Uso. He got screwed over by Roman Reigns. And people just kind of idled by and watched by. And it wasn't fair. And that's what he could say again. That what, what makes him an even better heel today? That wasn't fair what happened to me. I was screwed over once again. This guy cost me. This guy cost me. And CM Punk can be like, well, you cost me my shot at WrestleMania. I cost you the championship. And you'll see in just a second with some of the pictures, there is an element of glee on the face of CM Punk that he cost him the World Heavyweight Championship. So there's lots of stuff set up here, isn't there? There's Drew McIntyre's CM Punk's issue is very much set up. CM Punk in several interviews has said that he's actually pretty close into, into like shockingly recovering fast. I think initially it was said that he might be back by sort of the latter part of this year. In that interview he did with Ariel Hawani, he was suggesting more actually like, no, I, I think genuinely I could I could have taped up and gone for WrestleMania. So maybe CM Punk is a bit closer to returning than we maybe think. Maybe CM Punk is actually not far off um, getting cleared. Maybe it's going to be a couple of months, not too far away. So they set up certainly CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre once again. As far as the more immediate future for Damian Priest who goes after his championship I mean it's kind of I suppose it's kind of got to be Drew but how do they do that because you've got you've got two heels there you've got who who would the fans cheer for in the Judgment Day versus uh, Drew McIntyre of course look Drew, Drew and Judgment Day were aligned weren't they uh, at Survivor Series in War Games last year so do they just have Drew veer off and just keep feuding with Punk even though he's not cleared yet? Do they have Drew feud with Damian Priest because he cashed in on him? Or do they just have Damian Priest just feud with someone else? Like, what, what do they do? Or do they just add Damian Priest to this match and that's going to be the match they do? Uh, backlash, you've got Damian Priest versus Rollins versus McIntyre. Like, what direction do they go in? Because I, I, mean, I think with Cody, because this is the interesting thing with Cody, Cody's got to defend his championship now month to month. In terms of histories, and a, a logical person he would face off against next would probably be like a Seth Rollins or something, I think. So that's that's very curious as well. But just to kind of wrap up the, this first match, I thought it absolutely delivered. I thought that, I think most people kind of thought Drew would probably win. Drew gets his moment, but it was the bit afterwards. It's always, it's always the thing you don't see coming. It's always the thing that does surprise you. And I think... We've kind of, Damien Priest has been mocked, hasn't he? Damien Priest has been mocked for all of these instances where champions have been down and beaten and bloodied and he's not done anything. Well, now he does do something. And does Damien Priest feel like a world champion? Not based on his sort of recent booking, but if they get it right, and this, and this is where I think you do have to sort of say that Triple H with his booking does have a little bit of credit in the bank here. Previously, if it was the Vincent Mann regime and Damian Priest cashed in, you'd go, but he doesn't feel like a world champion. It doesn't feel like it can work. In a few weeks' time, we're going to be like, you've got to get the belt off him. He doesn't feel like a world champion. This could be Jack Swagger territory when he won the when he won the title and it just didn't work and they had to drop it. Couldn't Can Damian Priest legitimately be elevated into feeling like a legitimate world champion? It's possible. I think it's possible. And I do have an element of faith in Triple H to try and get it right. The way to do it, he's got to win matches. He's got to win matches. He's got to be booked strong. And they do have an opportunity there to to get another main event level talent. In the past, I'd be concerned that they could fumble it. But I think it's possible that they can get it right. So there's so many different 
splintering stories coming out of this one, which is uh, really uh, exciting. What people are saying here in the chat about this one as well. Uh, Rody says, I think you'd have to cheer for Drew uh, against Damian Priest. Um, uh, Carrion says, the people saying Roman was going to win have been real quiet because history repeats itself and today the Roman Empire foul. Uh, Chris says, Seth uses his rematch clause. Um, Bob says, Drew won't leave because after Punk feud, he may go feud with Priest. I don't think uh, Drew McIntyre is going to leave. I, I, I just genuinely think it's just a case of actually... The right thing to do for Drew and his character right now is to be screwed over again. That's He's the ultimate, like, the guy who keeps getting screwed over and he thinks everyone's against him. So what do you do? You screw him over in the grandest way possible, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the uh, the way to go. Uh, Stephanie Jenks says, Last year I found both Priest and Drew lacking in charisma. Drew had stepped up the heel turn, but Priest is still in need of improvement. This is going to be very make or break for Damian Priest, definitely. Uh, we've got over 200 people watching. We are 25 likes away from 100 likes. So if you haven't already, click that like button. Be sure to subscribe as well, bottom right hand corner. Uh, we're less than 20 subscribers away from 17,300. So if you haven't already, click the like button and be sure to subscribe whilst you're at it let's move on to the philadelphia street fight which i'm going to give this match actually a lot of credit here because before when we were the, in the in the watch long when we were going through the predictions and we were talking about this match and i said uh, who wins who even really cares um but just before it started i kind of had to stop myself and i said you know what owen actually this match, I think this match is going to be a bit of a sleeper. I think this one's going to deliver. I think this one's going to be a lot of fun. And to their credit, that's exactly what it was. It was fun, this one. And and thinking about it, why why wouldn't it be? It should be. It's a street fight, which means that everyone's... And it's a six-person, uh, six-man tag team Philadelphia street fight. So you've got weapons. You've got tables. You've got kendo sticks. Um, you've got brawling. And that's what the crowd wants. They came out and said Bubba Ray Dudley's a special guest referee in a referee shirt that was, I mean, way too tight for him. I mean, let's not dress it up. <laughs> way too tight for um, Bubba Ray. Or as Randy Orton called him once, Blubba Ray. And I'm not one to talk by any stretch of the imagination there, but that did make me laugh. Um, and I suppose maybe the best thing with this was the special guest commentary of WWE Hall of Famer Snoop Dogg, who was just sensational. <laughs> I mean, just absolutely sensational on commentary in this. It's personality. It's, a, it's charisma. And it's the viewer at home. This match, if they took it too seriously, it would have been like, and I think this has been the problem with this feud. I don't really care about the final testament. I'm not sure what they're trying to be. It feels a bit like, I know, dark, gritty and all that. I'm like, eh, I don't know. Um, the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley pairing has been okay. You know, they started off trying to be heels, but no one wants to boo them, so they become baby faces. But this feud on television has felt very forced, hasn't it? It's felt very like, well, we don't really care that much. So, okay. And, I, and when they announced it for a WrestleMania match, I thought, they've got a bit lucky to get on the card there, really. I'm not sure if that's WrestleMania worthy. But what they did with this is, they just said, let's, let's just go out there, beat each other up with weapons. Do smoke and mirrors. Do table spots. I mean, there was a spot where B-Fab did a Russian leg sweep to Scarlet off the ring apron through a table. I mean, madness. Absolute madness. But um, the pride get the victory in the end, securing the pinfall um, on cross uh, to get the uh, to get the one, two, three. And um, yeah, I, I, I thought I thought it went just over eight minutes and I thought it was fine. I thought it was fun. I, that was, I was concerned that this would be a lull in the show and it would be boring. Didn't go too long, didn't need to go too long. And um, I thought it did fine. I, I, it was, it exceeded my expectations. My expectations weren't very high for it. I don't, I still don't really care about either team and I don't really care about the program but I thought it was um I thought I thought they did well I thought they did well uh next match was LA Knight versus AJ Styles and I feel so bad for AJ Styles and if I'm him I'm going back to the WWE gorilla position I'm going back to production in WWE and saying how many stadium shows do we run per year how many WrestleManias have we done? 40 at this point. And actually technically more because they've been two-day events since uh, since 2020. 
So we've done a whole bunch of stadium shows. We've done a whole bunch of uh, WrestleManias. What is it with you guys that you can't set up a stadium without blinding people by lights? I know that was the weekend song. That was a WrestleMania theme song, Blinding Lights. But what are we doing? Because it happened to AJ Styles in 2019 at WrestleMania 35 against Randy Orton, where the biggest takeaway from the match was, I hope it was good, but I couldn't see it because I was blinded by WWE shining lights in my eyes. And it was the same here. They did it again. The second... <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't get it. So the match was really... Um, you could hear lots of chants of, turn the lights off, we can't see, please turn the lights off, um, all, all that all that kind of nonsense. And I think with that in mind, I think they did do well, LA Knight and AJ Styles. I thought they delivered a good match, a match that those that could see it were able to buy into. And um, once again, this, this was a, a, a feud that I felt was a bit forced and I didn't really care too much about. I kind of enjoyed the sort of segments of that we saw on television with Ellie Knight showing up at AJ's house and Ellie Knight desc uh, disguising himself to go after AJ. But I did watch it on TV and feel like, oh, I'm not sure how much I truly care. It did feel a little bit like the booking of it was, we need to give LA Knight a match at WrestleMania because he's the Slim Jim athlete. And he does deserve it because he was off WrestleMania last year, which was a joke. Um, so he deserves that WrestleMania match and that WrestleMania uh, moment. And he gets the victory. He uh, hits the BFT on AJ Styles for the one, two, three. Styles debuts new music as well at WrestleMania. He had teased that he was going to be debuting new music. But LA Knight gets that big WrestleMania moment. And this is the important thing too with WWE, particularly in the um, particularly in the Triple H era. Is it's in the past with Vince not so much in the Attitude Era, but certainly post-Attitude Era, that you've got your sort of top baby face and everyone else feels lesser. Everyone else feels lesser. And it's important still, despite having Cody Rhodes as the face of the uh, of the company and the top baby face of the champion, you still need to have those top stars. You still need to have those top superstars that you can put into those positions at any point. And uh, LA Knight, LA Knight's a curious case because he was he was super, um, super popular, in last year and you kind of worried that did they take too long did they not did they not capitalize on it had the feud against Raymond Reigns that I was kind of a bit against at the time because you knew that Reigns was going to beat him and what was that going to do for his popularity he still does get big reactions and still does is over with his promos I, I do think the bloom is off the rose a little bit with him a little bit particularly with having the rock around recently you kind of just kind of seen the comparison of, oh, this this does feel like a lesser version of the sort of rock. That's what it kind of feels like. Um, but he needed the win tonight. AJ Styles isn't hurt by by losing by any stretch of the imagination when it comes to that. So LA Knight gets the win and uh, and deservedly so, I think, for him. Um, but those, those damn lights, <laughs> those damn lights in the crowd. And uh, even people were saying to me on the watch long, yeah, I went to... WrestleMania in 2019, and I was blinded by those lights. It's rough. It's rough. And I just, if I was AJ, I'd be so pissed off of that going, what is it with you guys? At this point, is it a rib? Are you doing this to me? Because it's happened, this has happened to me twice. Why is this, why is this happening? Why are you doing this? So, um, yeah, I, I think that uh, I'd be pretty annoyed by that. Um, we are 10 likes away from 100 likes, by the way. If you haven't already, click that like button. Uh, be sure to subscribe. We are uh, 14 subscribers away from 17,300, um, which is uh, amazing. So many people have got involved over this WrestleMania weekend. So many people have got involved on the watch-alongs and the post-shows as well. So really appreciate everyone that's uh, tuned in across these shows. Next match was the United States Championship triple threat match as Logan Paul has retained his United States Championship defeating Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. Another one where I'll go that this match delivered. I'm going to sound very repetitive, I know. I'm going to sound very boring and very repetitive. And you're going to say, oh, and you said that before. You said that a minute ago. You said that this match was good or you said that this match delivered. But that's every match this tonight. Every match lived up or did what I hoped it did, and that was deliver. And uh, this one's been a really uh, interesting build because the build was uh, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. 
versus Logan Paul. Like they've both been trying to go after him. They've both been trying to beat him up. And then you get to a point, as they did in this match, where you go, well, this is a triple threat match and we both want to win. So if we both want to win, we've got to, eventually we've got to start fighting each other, right? And uh, and that's what they did. Um, there was some really nice, innovative stuff in this. Really, really innovative stuff. I suppose the thing that would probably get the biggest attention from a social media point of view is the the prime mascot. And it's becoming a bit of a WrestleMania tradition, isn't it? Of uh, uh, Logan Paul will come to the ring. He'll be accompanied by the person dressed in the bottle of prime. Previously, it was KSI. This time, it's another social media, streaming, YouTube, Twitch sensation. It was I Show Speed. And poor Speed, because he got the shit kicked out of him by Randy Orton. I mean, and Speed's a young guy. How how old is Speed? Is, is, is he, he's got, well, I think he's like 18, isn't he? Something like that. He's very young. <laughs> and Randy Orton beat the hell out of this kid. Now... It felt like the discussion of, oh, who's it going? Who's it going to be? Because they've got the face thing, so you're going, oh, is it going to be? Is it going to be KSI again? We did see KSI get an RKO from Randy Orton recently on SmackDown. What is it with Randy Orton and these uh, streamers? And uh, he ripped it off, and it was Speed. And Speed, to be fair, like proper cussed out Randy Orton. They had to bleep him quite a bit. He was dropping f bombs, and he was barking. And first of all, Randy Orton gives him a kick <laughs> that sends this kid flying flying backwards uh, on ringside and Randy Orton says right no I'm gonna do a bit more RKO speed onto the announce table and I, I always I feel like we've had this conversation so many times here on the channel or I've had it with so many people on uh, on social media and they get so um, sort of defensive why is WWE doing this? Enough of these streamers, enough of these social media guys, enough of these YouTubers. I can't believe they're getting involved. It's stupid, it's stupid, it's stupid. And I think that we as wrestling fans need to be a bit more open-minded. I know we like our wrestlers. and I know we like people that are, you know, um, I don't, we know we like people that are, have paid their dues and gone to wrestling school and what have you. I get it. But this is an entertainment business. This is about getting attention. This is about getting people talking. And as we have seen with your likes of your Logan Pauls or with your KSIs or your Bad Bunnies or just name them. Name these people that have got involved. Because they've got such a big following and because they're so well known. I, I, I'm not even on Twitter specifically right now. But I know that clip of Speed getting an RKO from Randy Orton on the announce table, that will go viral. And that's that's what it is in 2024. You know, you look back at celebrity um, involvement in WrestleMania history, you do go all the way back to the first WrestleMania when you look at, they mentioned it on commentary, you look at Liberace, you look at Muhammad Ali, you look at... Um, um, this is why it's early in the morning. Girls just want to have fun. Cindy Lauper and her involvement. And I, obviously people are like, how dare you? You're saying that um, Speed is the same level of celebrity as, as those people or Mr. T in the main event. But the, uh, the the celebrity has changed over years, isn't it? The What defines a celebrity and what defines popularity has evolved and changed in 2024. You know, go, go continue to go out. As people said, Donald Trump, Mike Tyson, um... Pete Rose, Floyd Mayweather, like that's what WrestleMania is about. It's about that crossover um, mainstream appeal. So I have no problem with it at all. I thought it was a, I thought it was a great moment. And Logan Paul retains, and um, it's going to be curious to see what his schedule is going to be like moving forward. He's been a lot more regular on WWE programming. He has said that he signed what he is essentially saying is a full time deal with WWE, that that's going to be one of his, his main jobs. I don't know if I expect him on television every single week, but certainly he's going to be on television a lot. And um, I suppose now you go into, well, who does beat him for the US Championship? Who does he face next? He's faced um, these big names. He's faced Roman Reigns. He's faced Seth Rollins. He's faced Rey Mysterio. Does he now face Randy Orton in a singles match? 
Um, he's faced Kevin Owens in a singles match. So does he face Randy Orton in a singles match? I think that's maybe the direction that they could go in. Um, there was talks before or rumor before about facing LA Knight. Maybe LA Knight is the one to defeat him for the championship. I could see that as a, as a possibility. Um, so I'd like, I wouldn't mind seeing him against like an AJ Styles. I know that Styles is a heel now, so I'm not sure how that would work. But um, yeah, maybe he does face LA Knight in the future. Maybe LA Knight's the guy to defeat him for the championship. But Logan Paul, he retains in, um, like I said, I thought a match that was really, really good. Uh, penultimate match of the evening. Bailey is your brand new WWE Women's Champion. She finished her own story and defeated Io Sky at WrestleMania. And once again, I'm going to repeat myself, delivered. Absolutely. And looking at these two in this match, you can't be shocked. These are two of the best um women female wrestlers in ww just some of the best wrestlers don't scratch out the term women um eo sky for me is just on another level um her athleticism her creativity i think is so great i think with bailey i think her biggest strong point bailey is her psychology I think Bailey's ability to tell a story, Bailey's ability to connect with the audience, Bailey's ability to um, tell a story through selling or her knee or near falls or what have you um, is 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 fantastic, and that and that's what she did so effectively uh, in this match. The story was about her bad knee, and they did so many near falls, so many spots, moon salts by Io Sky, elbow drops by Bailey, Bailey to belly as well kick out um, cross faces that you can see right there. They did one spot, which I really, really liked, which was Bailey goes for a rose plant on EO Sky, and she manages to kind of kip up and kind of block the move that way, which was just incredible. But eventually, Bailey does get the victory. She hits the rose plant on EO Sky. And um, I guess the, the question now would be, what's the next chapter in that story? Damage control is still a faction. So what does damage control do? As a faction right now, they're still the women's tag team champions of Asuka and Kairi Sane. They've still got Dakota Kai. They've still got uh, Io Sky. Do we have a rematch? Because that sometimes is the frustrating thing coming out of a WrestleMania, isn't it? And I'm, I'm, I wonder what Triple H is going to do with this. Because in the past, kind of my biggest frustration would be coming out of WrestleMania is we would basically see WrestleMania again, the same card a week later or a couple of weeks later at Backlash. Like the main event of Backlash would be a rest, they go, so WrestleMania rematch, and they just do the, the main event of WrestleMania again. So they, they would do, in the past, they would just go, oh, we're going to do Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns again. Or they did it before, we're going to do Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins again. You go, yeah, but we kind of saw it at WrestleMania. So where's the progression? I always like it when they offer something different. Um, could they do a rematch? They could. The, there's certainly a lot of female talent on SmackDown. Maybe Bailey would defend it against Dakota Kai. Maybe she would face off against Naomi. Maybe she would face off against, probably not Jay Kyle yet. Maybe she'll face Bianca Belair. There's certainly options. And also, it must be stressed too, that we are heading into a draft very, very quickly. So, like that means anything, I know, because the brand split in WWE is pretty laughable, isn't it? But... Nevertheless, uh, the brand split is still technically enforced and the rosters are going to be shaken up. So maybe Bailey will have a complete new list of people to defend against in the future. But Bailey is the women's champion, uh, winning the Royal Rumble and also winning the women's championship. And finally, as we spoke about early on, we have a brand new undisputed WWE Universal Champion. Well, I mean, I don't even know what this title is going to be called anymore it's gone through so many names like on commentary sometimes they call it the undisputed wwe championship it's the same lineage as the wwe championship so uh, do they just start calling it the wwe championship now do they drop the universal championship i could see them doing that you've got the world heavyweight championship and the wwe championship i wouldn't be shocked uh, genuinely, I wouldn't be shocked if they just changed the name to the WWE Championship. Because again, it's a new era. Nothing is off limits, I think. Um, and I know that Cody said several times that he's going to change the design of the championship and winged eagle. I'd be very surprised with that. As much as we are seeing change in WWE, as much as they are, um, you know, anything can happen and any change can happen, that that design is very specific and that design is if we give that we can give that to people 
and it's got the WWE logo on it. Um, I suppose what you could say is, well, you can still have the WWE Championship just be like a winged eagle version. And then that title there, when you do give it out to, uh, to people, when they win sporting events or they win the leagues in whatever sport they do or whatever, just give them that one. <laughs> we can we can have the championship we give to people and we can have the actual WWE championship. Maybe maybe they do that. I'm not sure. But Cody Rhodes is the new champion after defeating Roman Reigns in the Bloodlines Rules match. Uh went just over 33 minutes. And what was um questionable, I think, for a while, wasn't it, that this was bloodline rules, but for a lot of the match, that stipulation wasn't really enforced was it for 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 a long time in it everyone was going if well if this is bloodline rules i'm not really sure like what's what's the big thing being enforced because they brought out into the crowd for a bit yeah they used sort of kendo sticks um but that was it they just had a match for a while with lots of back and forth and it was like oh maybe this this feels a bit this feels a bit strange but uh, eventually we did get, you know, the chaos. We did get the overbooking that we expected. We did get, uh, starts off with Jimmy Uso coming out. Jimmy Uso super kicks Cody a couple of times. Out comes Jay Uso, his brother, uh, after their match last night, a night one of WrestleMania, which for me, actually, I think was probably my biggest disappointment of the weekend was uh, Jimmy versus Jay Uso, a match that I... I didn't say I had high hopes for, but I did expect it to have a bit of a a better execution, and I thought it was it was actually really really bad um, that the Jimmy versus Jay Uso uh, on night one. But um, so they they get involved, and they probably had the best spot um, better than anything in their match, which was Jay Uso spearing Jimmy off the stage, which was uh, pretty great to see. So Jay Uso sp- uh, spears Jimmy off the stage. Um, so that's one member of the bloodline down. It then leads to Solo Sokoa coming out. Uh, a repeat of last year's WrestleMania, of course, where Sokoa hit Cody Rose with the Samoan spike. And uh, he hits him with a Samoan spike. Cody kicks out. Hits him with a spear and Samoan spike combination. Kicks out. And this then leads to John Cena. Yes, big match John. John Cena arrives on the scene. Takes out Solo Sokoa, and that makes a ton of sense because when Cena was last on WWE television, he was written off TV by um, by Solo Sokoa. So Solo Sokoa defeated him at Crown Jewel, hit him with about 10 million different Samoan spikes, and uh, beat Cena. I mean, ironically enough, uh, he's got kind of the sort of Austin Theory booking disease, which is beat John Cena and then completely fall off the edge of a cliff and not win many matches after that which is what happened to Austin Theory and happened to uh, to Solo Sokoa since he beat Cena. But a uh, yes, he uh, John Cena comes out. And for all of the talk about Cena, he's not going to get physical. He can't take bumps because of the filming and what have you. Not necessarily true. Cena comes out, tees off against Solo Sokoa. Attitude adjustment. It's an attitude adjustment to Roman Reigns as well. Clears the uh, announce table, does Cena, and then hits the uh, AA on Solo Sokoa through the table. And you're going, right, Sokoa's been taken out. What next? Well, what next was The Rock. The Rock said, no, no, I'm not having this. The Rock comes down to the ring, gets in the face of Cena, hits him with a rock bottom, and you go, right, now it's going to be for Rock once again to cost Cody Rhodes the match. Then what happens? The gong goes off. The gong of The Undertaker, who he's very, very particular now about how he portrays his character on television because he's never he said i'm not i'm never going to do the dead man character again on wwe tv i know he did do it at that like saudi football match recently but his point of view is i'm never going to do it again i'm not doing that that's not who i I retired that character when i said my final farewell at survivor series in 2020 so i'm not doing that ever again so the uh the gong goes off and he appears uh, behind the rock and it says (laughs) It's like 1998 all over again. You've got The Rock um, in the ring with The Undertaker. How wild is that to say in 2024? The Rock and The Undertaker in the ring at the same time. Um, actually, I missed out a bit there. Seth Rollins, this was really weird. And I, I think they shot this horrifically. So Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins, well, the Shields music plays and Rollins comes out in a tactical vest, but they kind of missed him. And then Roman Reigns hits him with a Superman punch. And he was just kind of there. And it was like, what? 
why did they do that? I don't know why they did that. I still go, that was really weirdly executed, that whole, he came out in the shield gear and Roman got him. Uh, anyway, The Rock gets choke slammed by The Undertaker. The gong hits again. They disappear because The Undertaker's choke slammed The Rock into dust, I guess. And um, Roman Reigns eventually gets hit by three crossroads. Rose actually manages to hit three crossroads. One, two, three. Wins the championship. Finishes the story. Wins the big one. Roman Reigns, his championship reign ends at, uh, was it, 1,316 1, days. So uh, they said it was the bottom of the ninth. Well, the game is now indeed over. We have a brand new WWE champion for the first time in close to four years. Uh, Roman Reigns pinned in a singles match for the first time since December 2019. Of course, uh, Roman has been pinned in a match. That was a tag team match of Money in the Bank last year. But for the first time since December 2019 against Baron Corbin at the Tables, Ladders and Chairs pay-per-view, uh, Roman Reigns has been pinned in a singles match as well. And as you can see, with the sort of closing moments of WrestleMania, it was a bit, you know, it was a big acceptance speech. It was a big acceptance speech. It was a big... Um, Cody thanking everyone. He thanked Triple H. He thanked Bruce Pritchard, uh, who he brought out as well. Uh, his mother was in the ring, as you can see right there. He handed the championship to her. He said, I can't do it. I can't hand the championship to Dusty Rhodes, but I can hand it uh, to his wife, his mother, which is indeed what he did. Um, and it's the beginning of a new era. Now, it's Cody Rhodes as the face of WWE. And now... This and this is the beauty of professional wrestling is that it, it never ends. It doesn't stop here, you know. As Triple H likes to says, the moment that WrestleMania goes off the air, I'm then handed a, a a run sheet, a format for Monday's edition of Raw. Raw's already kind of been written as to what the plans are. That's already been planned out. So we now tomorrow go into this new era of Raw with Cody Rhodes as the world champion. I mean, it's technically the SmackDown World Championship. So I don't know if now he's going to appear on SmackDown. I think that's why the draft is going to be important because. SmackDown has been the uh, the A show, the premier show for WWE for the last uh, five years because it's been on the bigger network. It's been on Fox. The moment that um, SmackDown was put on Fox, it became the A show because it gets the most viewers. It's network television and their deal, I think, was for the most money. Um, that's changing once again. Uh, Raw will once again become the premier show, the A show, the flagship for WWE. Uh, when it moves to Netflix at the beginning of 2025. We still don't know actually what's going to happen with it once its contract with NBC Universal does expire later this year because there's like a three or four month period where Raw is not going to have a home. So they've got to kind of figure out what they're going to do, whether they, I don't know what they do with that, to be honest. <laughs> I really don't know. Whether they go on a network, whether they go on a streaming service, whether they wait, I don't know what they do there. But um, I think Cody will probably stay on Raw and uh, he's... The, with the amount of money Netflix are paying WWE, Cody's going to be the face of that show on that show. So he's going to be drafted to Raw with his championship. And then I think um, the World Heavyweight Championship will go to SmackDown. So that's going to be um, fascinating to see who's the champion by that point. So that's why I say this year the draft is going to be really, really important for WWE because they're going to have to kind of put everyone in their right, you know, right proper places uh, realistically. Um, so... They're certainly going to have to do that. Um, but yes, the era of Roman Reigns is over. The era of Cody Rhodes has begun. And uh, of course, if we get any more details, we're going to have news videos coming tomorrow, um, uh, tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon as well. A lot of backstage reaction. I'm sure there's going to be lots of quotes coming out of the uh, post-WrestleMania press conferences that I think are going on right now. So it's going to be curious to see what they say, what news breaks. Uh, we've got a big week, obviously, with the post-WrestleMania edition of Raw tomorrow night. In addition to that, there is... Um, a huge developing story in AEW with this AEW all-in foot backstage footage that's going to be released that seemingly is going to show CM Punk's legit backstage fight with Jack Perry. They're going to air that on television. They have said, or at least Meltzer has said on Twitter, they're not going to air the footage of CM Punk lunging at Tony Khan if that footage does exist. Um, it's just going to be the footage with Jack Perry. But even that is staggering that that's going to air on television so we get more details on that of course we'll let you know in the uh in the future videos but uh lastly just from me guys uh thank you so much to everyone that's tuned in over this wrestlemania weekend it's uh, the 
uh, well, WrestleMania, the first WrestleMania I live streamed here on the channel was WrestleMania 37. We did WrestleMania 38, WrestleMania 39 last year, and obviously this being WrestleMania 40. So it's the fourth WrestleMania live stream that we've done, that I've done here on the channel. Fifth overall in terms of covering stuff from it. Did cover a little bit back in 2020 when this channel just started and my content was horrible. Oh, that's much better now. But um, back when it was really, really, really bad and I had no idea what I was doing. Um, so thank you so much for, for tuning in over the last few days. Thank you so much for interacting with these watch longs with these videos whether you're a fan of wrestling or not whether you're a man united fan that just comes over from united view whether you're just someone that's just scrolling through youtube and goes i just you know want to have a bit of background noise or i used to be a wrestling fan and i'm going to see the news or i'm watching wrestlemania and it'd be cool to see what other people are reacting to in real time um thank you so much for tuning in it is not lost on me your support really does mean the world i am so fortunate and so blessed that um, you guys allow me to uh, to do this, to, to do this, to hopefully entertain you guys or help provide just a little bit of extra context and maybe some things of wrestling or just at the, at the very least provide, like I say, some background noise to help you get through the day. It certainly is not lost to me and I am so fortunate and so blessed and um, so lucky that I'm in this position. And the only reason I'm in this position is because you guys tune in and you guys interact. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll continue to uh, do what we do here at Wrestling News 365. And that's bring you all of the top wrestling news, content, and uh, much more. A big year. So thank you very much, guys. Click the like button. Be sure to subscribe. And we'll speak for you again very soon. I'm out of here. Peace.